Hello, I am Sharon Jumbe and welcome you to another edition of Business Time right here on Times Television. This is a magazine program in which we look at some of the major business stories happening in Malawi and beyond. Coming up in the program today, Finance Minister Gudal Gondwe sees economy growing by 7% in 2019. Boosting productivity is key to revamping agriculture. We have these and other stories. Stay tuned. Now you can access the Daily Times, Malawi News and the Sunday Times newspapers anytime, anywhere, by the click of a mouse or a swipe on your smartphone. With E-Times, right on your mobile gadget. Flip through the pages with a swipe or a click. Navigate through all pages and see clear pictures and designs. Access a database of previous papers of the Daily Times, Malawi News and the Sunday Times. Easy. Subscribe now to E-Times. Go to www.times.mw forward slash e-edition. Sign up and log in. Enter your password and enjoy the newspaper. It's about time. In our first story today, in a typical case of dreaming in color, Finance Minister Gudal Gondwe has expressed hope that the economy would grow by at least 7% in 2019. The growth projection comes at a time global economic think tanks have predicted economic growth to remain as subdued this year. More in this report. This comes against the background that the economy was projected to grow by 5.2% in 2017, 4% in 2018 and 4.1% in 2019. Gondwe told the Daily Times that such developments will lead to the nation being able to finance its budget fully without the need for external support. We started well. What we've done now so far is to stabilize the economy. It means that the Republic debt is not accumulating as it used to be in 2014 18, because we have stabilized the economy. And uh, and uh, the the, uh, the uh, meaning uh, the meaning that uh, we can now start growth. I expect that uh, we will catch up with a growth rate of for uh, seven eight percent soon, and that will mean that uh, that will mean that uh, we will have enough resources of our own, no longer depending upon the budget support. Uh, of our own to manage our budget. That's what it's going to be. Reserve Bank of Malawi spokesperson Banengwira agreed with Gondwe, stressing that they expect inflation to stand at 9% in 2019 before falling to 5% in 2021 and that the exchange rate will remain stable. What we expect to see going forward is that inflation on annual average will remain in the single digits from now up to 2021 when we expect to hit our target of 5% during the first quarter. But within 2019 and 2021, we expect the averages to be around 9. In certain months, the inflation rate may go above 10%, but on average for the, for the whole year, we expect to have an annual average of less than 10%. We also expect to build our foreign exchange reserves to around six months of imports. That is building on the three months that we have maintained so far. And this will cushion the exchange rate so that it will continue being stable for the foreseeable future. We expect that this will sustain the growth that the economy is facing right now from the 4.1 expected for 2019 to around 6 to 7 percent in around 2020. The recent Malawi Economic Monitor published in November last year by the World Bank indicated that Malawi's growth outlook is highly vulnerable to weather conditions and further pointed that growth is projected to gradually increase to around 4 to 5 percent over the next two years. However, a country report published by the International Monetary Fund IMF in May last year, predicted that economic growth will increase gradually, reaching over 6% in the medium term. From Lilongwe, I am Jimome Mangazi.
The Farmers Union of Malawi, FUM, on Tuesday engaged business journalists on the proposed 2019 seed bill. The bill is part of the Malawi government reform agenda for the agriculture sector in line with the Agriculture Transformation Initiative as espoused in the National Agricultural Policy. Speaking in Mangochi during the interface, FUM Chief Executive Officer Prince Gabondam Gaga described the reform agenda as a step in the right direction. What is very uh, critical is that, the, you know, as a country, we have, uh, the, we have developed a national agricultural policy, which is uh, spelling out all our aspirations in terms of where we want to take agriculture in this country. And when you read it, uh, uh, you, you go through this document, one critical aspect that you see is that uh, we are moving away from the business as usual, subsistence or, or oriented agriculture towards a more commercialized an agriculture whose production is informed by market information, in which case we are going towards commercializing our agriculture. Now, uh, one of the challenges that we are facing in the, in the agricultural sector is the issue of agric low agricultural productivity, in which case we are not as efficient in the way we do our agriculture. Now, one of the reasons is that we don't, uh, most of our, the majority of our farmers, they have uh, low use of improved technology, of which seed is part of uh, of, of the technologies that are normally uh, employed in agriculture. So what government has done is to, okay, take an initiative to make sure that it supports the seed uh, industry or the seed subsector to make sure that uh, we embrace with the modernity what is happening around, uh, around the, the region where uh, the seed market is being opened up to allow for uh, inputs to come from neighboring countries, to come and deal with the city deficits that we are having in this country. Similarly, if we have a seed surplus here, we can also allow that seed to go out across the borders, maybe go to Zambia, go to Tanzania and other countries to service those countries. So the, 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 the region, the sub-regions, whether Comesa or Sadek, or the continent has taken an initiative to collectively uh, support agricultural development under the auspices of the Malabo Declaration. So uh, it is very crucial that this country develops a regulation or a regulatory framework that supports the production and marketing of the seed in this country. Because where you have you are doing cross-border trade or you are doing inter-trade within the country, there is still need for sanity, there is still need for regulation to make sure that we achieve the quality and the standard that we desire in as far as the seed production and marketing is concerned to spearhead the agricultural transformation agenda that is espoused in the National Agricultural Policy. Uh, so this process is also is a a combination of the desire to have uh, a, 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 a new seed regulatory framework because we have but it's an archaic it's old so we are reviewing the seed bill we are we, we are reviewing i should say the seed act the old act to have a new act a seed act now this process is very important because it is we are at a stage where government is consulting stakeholders in the agricultural sector. Now, as the Farmers Union of Malawi, we have been assigned a responsibility to make sure that we consult various stakeholders, especially those that are non-state actors, to chip in or to contribute to the development of a new CD Act. Now, an important piece player in this aspect, the integral part is where you have a journalist or the media. Uh, that's why we are here meeting the business journalists to make sure that they are engaged, but also they make a contribution to 
of a process of developing a new city act. So now, we think it's important that... The, now, how mm -hmm. significant are these reforms in reference to uh, the agriculture uh, policy and the seed bill? Oh, okay. Maybe to begin with, because I think the overarching is the agricultural policy. A country needs to have a document that guides its agricultural development agenda. Okay? So, in the first place, as a country, Malawi needed to have an agenda for the next five or ten years to drive or to guide agricultural development. So the significance of the national agricultural policy is that the country is well guided on where it wants to go. And this the document, Malawi has not hidden its ambitions. That one, it wants to make sure that the agriculture is commercialized, but also it, it, it is industrialized. It is also, it has not hidden its ambition that it is moving from pure small scale subsistence towards medium and large scale. So I think that, in, to me, it's, it's what is important. Now, to have that such kind of an agriculture where the medium and large scale are very crucial, it means you really need to have improved use, I mean use of the improved inputs. Because you cannot be using an improved technology and expect to match the global competition. Because we are at a global scale, we are at a global market competing with Zambia, we are at a global market competing with Europe. We are the global market competing with Asia, America, and many others. So we need to up the game in terms of what level of investments do we put to sustainably and significantly raise our productivity in terms of agriculture. That's where the seed bill or the seed issue becomes very crucial. Because agriculture, the major aspect is the seed. If you plant low quality seed, you also get low quality results. So that's where it becomes very crucial that this country needs to work out on the seed issues much more, providing a regulatory framework on how production of that seed, how the production and marketing of that seed is done, whether we are talking of domestic production and marketing or else we are talking of international or global production and marketing. And ABJ Secretary General Daunga Sabola held Farmers Union of Malawi for taking on board business reporters in the crucial stages of coming up with the bill. Our economy is an agro-based economy. So I can't be talking of an economy without talking of agriculture. And today's uh, discussion uh, centered on the new seed bill. Seed is very important in agriculture because seed uh, is the beginning of everything else. Where you get the seed wrong, that means everything else is expected to go wrong. So we thank uh, the farmers you know, of Malawi for organizing such a meeting. Uh, Previously, we've seen uh, bills being crafted, but without the, any uh, input from the media. However, it's unfortunate that at the end of the day, they come to us as the media to say, please communicate this uh, message to the people when we were not part of the uh, process of uh, discussing it. So what has happened today is very important. It has helped us to be part of, of this uh, process. And we hope that uh, through such engagements, we'll be able to effectively communicate uh, the masses on the importance of such uh, an important uh, legislation. Remember, this is Business Time on Times Television. As still to come, use and absorption of new technology by businesses decline. We will be back in 60 seconds. Now you can access the Daily Times, Malawi News, and the Sunday Times newspapers anytime, anywhere, by the click of a mouse or a swipe on your smartphone. With eTimes, right on your mobile gadget. Flip through the pages with a swipe or a click. 
navigate through all pages and see clear pictures and designs. Access a database of previous papers of the Daily Times, Malawi News and the Sunday Times. Easy. Subscribe now to E-Times. Go to www.times.mw forward slash e-edition. Sign up and log in. Enter your password and enjoy the newspaper. It's about time. Proceeding with the program, let's look at how the Malawi Guacha is faring against major trading currencies on the foreign exchange market. Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation Minister Emmanuel Fabiano has challenged Malawians living in the diaspora to invest in the country. Fabiano was speaking in Lilongwe when a team of Malawians living in the United States unveiled a bus company called Borneo. According to Fabiano, the launch of the bus company will enhance competition in the passenger transport business. Details in this report. According to Fabiano, Malawians will have to now choose on which comfortable bus they could use, as a new bus company has become one of the players offering passenger coach service buses in the country. He, however, says government is encouraging Malawians living in diaspora to emulate the bus service owners, saying investing in Malawi will help create more jobs, as well as to help the country to grow economically. Well, the coming in of uh, this uh, new bus company, Bonio Coach Limited, is very exciting um, to government, and it should be exciting for Malawians. Uh, because in the first place, we are going to have more opportunities of choosing uh, which uh, line bus, uh, company, bus company we should be using. And that's uh, providing uh, better service uh, to Malawi. Speaking during the launch, Alindine Nkwizalamba, the co-director of the company, said buses that are one of the kind will help Malawians. Um, I would say definitely a focus on the customer, the customer's needs. We're, bringing, um, we're focusing on safety with the dual drivers, where we have two drivers uh, on every shift. That way they're able to, sh to switch shifts. Um, there's no one that's driving the full four hours to and from Lilongwe. That's something that we're focusing on. We're also breathalyzing our drivers before they get behind the wheel. We breathalyze them to make sure that they're sober. That's another focus that we're... President of Boneo Bus Company, Sam Runtunga, says time has come for Malawians staying abroad to start investing in the country. He, however, pledged that 10% of the proceeds from the buses will be used to boost small-scale businesses in Malawi. Electric vehicles are on the verge of major growth spurt, according to many experts. Around the world, concerns about pollution and climate change are growing, and EV, EVs provide an attractive alternative to fossil fuel-powered vehicles. But high sticker prices remain a challenge. VOA's Steve Baragona has more on industry on the rise. A hundred electric buses arrived in Chile in November. President Sebastián Piñera welcomed them to the capital, Santiago. Chile will transform itself. After China, it will be the country with the highest quantity of electric buses in the world. In Costa Rica, electric vehicles are a key to the government's plan to decarbonize the economy. Manufacturers expect brisk business in the coming years says EV salesman Mariano Avalos. I think we heard about a projection for 2030, with about 50 percent of the cars being electric. Today we have 600 of these electric units in the country. I believe that next year it will be three or four times that number. From cars and buses to scooters, electric vehicles are expanding worldwide as concerns about climate change grow. Transportation generates about 14% of the world's greenhouse gases. 
and oil consumption is growing globally. Air pollution is growing with it. That adds to the allure of EVs in smoggy cities, says a spokesman for Indian EV company e-tron, Saptarshi Chakraborty. These are all pollution-free vehicles, and it, the running cost of these vehicles are less compared to petrol and diesel. Running costs are less because charging is usually cheaper than filling with gas or diesel. Electric motors also cost less to maintain. But EVs still cost more to buy than their fossil fuel counterparts. Government subsidies have driven sales in much of the world. In Norway, where more than a third of new cars sold are electric, generous tax breaks are just one of the perks, says EV driver Christian Bull. We can park for free, we, we drive into the city for free, uh, and also the amount of money we uh, had to pay for the horsepowers and everything, everything is much less with uh, these incentives, so uh, it has a big impact. But the government is rolling back some of the giveaways. Others expire in 2021. That might make an electric car less attractive, says EV driver Ida Vihovda. If it's the same as a normal car, I wouldn't consider it. But um, like it is right now, it's much cheaper because of the taxes and uh, the charging. So it's much better to have it now. But they are considering to let us pay for, for everything as well. So. The cost of batteries is dropping fast, but EVs will not compete with conventional cars on price until 2030, by one estimate. Subsidies may be needed to reach the government's goals, says the Norwegian EV Association's Stale Freienlund. Uh, we're supposed to be at 100% market share for electric cars in 2025. So to reach, to reach that goal, we need to be persistent. Experts say electric vehicles will likely need help from governments around the world until it's no longer cheaper to pollute. Steve Barragona, VOA News. Over the past year, the United States and China have clashed increasingly over trade, their visions for the world, and national security. And in 2019, at the question of whether the world's two biggest economies can work out a trade deal is something that is said to have an impact not only on their relationship, but the broader Chinese economy as well. VOA's Bill Idol has this report. As 2018 draws to a close, the Chinese economy is at a crossroads. As some see it, the choice is simple, do some heavy lifting and further liberalize or face an even sharper slowdown in economic growth. China says it wants reform, but on its own terms. A message the country's powerful leader, Xi Jinping, drove home at a recent meeting marking 40 years of reform and openness. He also had this ominous warning. Every step in our reform and opening up is not easy. In the future, we will inevitably face all sorts of risks and challenges, even unimaginable tempestuous storms. No one knows for sure if 90 days will be enough for the United States and China to make a deal, and the uncertainty is having an impact on companies' willingness to invest at home or abroad. Over the past year, real estate, retail, and car sales have started to falter. The stock market has dropped more than 20 percent, and the government is taking measures to control unemployment. China has started to lean on stimulus to help prop up the economy, but China analyst Scott Kennedy says unlocking opportunities doesn't necessarily require subsidies, high-tech gadgets, or wizardry. I think the question is not how much they're going to step on the gas, uh, but whether they are going to try and make this a more efficient machine by liberalizing the economy, by reducing market barriers to private companies, to foreign companies to invest in sectors that they are that are currently off limits. The arrest of high-tech giant Huawei's chief financial officer has added to the complexity of the trade tussle. For now, Washington and Beijing are trying to keep the two issues separate. But clearly, the trade war is about much more than trade. It's also about assumptions that have long been the foundation of U.S.-China relations and the question of whether China wants to become an open market, says Kennedy. I think that the U.S. goal is still to try and right the ship, to find a place where we can interact with each other peacefully on, on uh, the commercial side while also protecting our national security. I don't think the U.S. has decided to give up and say, forget it, we can't interact with these folks, we have to have a divorce, it's going to be Cold War number two. 
For now, that depends really on how the Chinese respond, he adds. Going forward, however, deep uncertainty at the commercial and government level will continue. Bill Eyed, VOA News, Beijing. On that note, we have come to the end of business time right here on Times TV. Until next week, I am Sharon Jumbe. But always remember, if it doesn't make money, it doesn't make sense. Goodbye.